Hello everyone, my name is Fazal Shahid and I'm student at O2 Asian Studies program. Uh, this uh, project is part of my arts uh, class uh, conducted by Venchi Hoja. I thank Venchi Hoja for providing me this opportunity to explain this uh, wedding, Pakistani wedding to you and I hope that you uh, like uh, this video. Thank you so much for your time. So we will be discussing in Pakistani marriage and inter-ethnic marriage in the city of uh, Karachi. It's a famous city of Pakistan in the month of December. So marriages are preferred in Pakistan in December because the weather is cool. So this uh, wedding includes uh, the groom is from Punjab. He is a Punjabi, my brother. It's a southern, uh, not a southern, a central province of Pakistan and the bride hails from Sindh. Uh, Sindh uh, is a uh, southern province of Pakistan. So both these provinces, they have different languages and uh, they have different customs and traditions. So this uh, marriage <coughs> is uh, a common sight these days, but before it was not the case. Uh, it was necessary to marry within the caste. So this is a common sight these days that interacting marriages are happening these days. So there are actually three events in a wedding, the uh, mehndi which is called the hina night, the barat and the walima. Barat is when the bride actually moves to the groom's house and the walima is actually uh, when uh, it's in honor for all the guests that, that uh, the marriage has been consummated. So uh, this is what happens uh, in the th usually traditional weddings. So this is the mehndi night which I'll be explaining to uh, all of you. Uh, as you can see, so uh, the groom is wearing the traditional Pakistani shalwar kameez. So it is called a shalwar kameez, a traditional to wear in such events. And uh, similar is the case uh, with the bride that you, you can observe that she is wearing a traditional gharara it's called. So these uh, are heavy dresses, very expensive. So they are usually uh, worn for these such events are especially designed for these events. So the Mehndi night begins with the bride's family waiting for the groom's family's arrival with the Mehndi. As you can see, this is the bride's family. They are waiting for the groom's family to arrive with the Mehndi. So uh, it is informed beforehand that how number of guests and how many people are coming. So what happened when the Mehndi arrives is that the immediate family members of the groom, like the, these are his sisters, his, bra, his niece and his elder sister-in-law, they are to carry this Mehndi. So now you can see that they have these garlands in their necks. So these are put on by the uh, bride's family as a welcome gesture. So with these girls accompanying the groom, uh, the <coughs> immediate family members and the relatives of the grooms, they follow. So it is like traditional for the immediate family members to accompany the groom. Most most of the time is sisters, their children and uh, the groom's brother and the, his, his own children. So this is the family entering the bride's house on the Mendy night and they are welcomed by everyone and photography is a part of it. It's indispensable. So the girls, the mem family members, they place the Mendy on the stage. It's a preset stage. It will be used as a dance floor. So they put everything uh, on the stage, uh, they decorate the mehndi over there and uh, after that uh, they uh, dance, the, the groom's uh, side they dance in happiness that uh, we have arrived and uh, <coughs> there's a brief dance session about 10 to 15 minutes where the, all the family members uh, of the groom, uh, only the groom's family members they dance. So as you can see this is the groom's family, they are here with lots of uh, you know uh, romp and pomp and photography is also there and uh, after that uh, this dance continues uh, f just to for 10 15 or maybe half an hour as long as they want to and then uh, the groom sits down on the stage so similarly, when the groom's mehndi is uh, settled down, then comes the bride with her mehndi. So similarly, she is accompanied by her brother, her sisters, her close relatives and the children. They can carry the mehndi and the other relatives, they follow her. So you can see there is a huge crowd at the back, but she is accompanied by her brother, elder brother. So at the in a similar manner, her mehndi is taken uh, to the stage. Uh, and it's placed there over there then they have the photography which is an essential part of the settings and after that they dance in a circle this dance also continues for 10 15 minutes or half an hour and then everybody sits down after this dance is done the family is done the friends of the groom 
they actually come out to to dance this dance is actually practiced before months beforehand so you can see they are also wearing same clothes and their moves are similar so it is a wonderful sight to see the dance thing so when the dance is finished the henna ceremony actually begins so in this ceremony uh, a leaf is placed on the girl's hand and uh, she, uh, everybody all the elders of the family come turn by turn and they place henna on that leaf and give the bride and the groom uh, these sweets and apart from these sweets they also give uh, them money which is called salami so uh, salami in urdu sense means uh, it's money to welcoming them so this money is actually later on given to the poor distributed among the poor and uh, this actually this ceremony means that they are actually giving prayers to the bride and groom for a happy life ahead having healthy life with kids and all the blessings uh, with the dick carry so the the point is that it is actually conducted by the elders as you can see in the pictures the mother in law uh, and her aunts and uh, other relatives so followed by uh, the henna ceremony then there is a live singing performance called the live qawali so these people are actual real life performers they are professionals they come to sing uh, on a wedding they are paid good money for it and they sing songs of the audience choice and uh, these songs include various folklore songs and everything they are actually divided into two sessions so the first session is for the folklore song and bollywood songs for the audience but in the second session when everybody leaves only boys are left it becomes uh, a boys night and they sing sufi and mystic songs uh, so their job is actually meant to charge up the crowd as you can see it is also traditional for the groom uh, to come and throw money on the singer this sing this money is actually taken by the band of the singer so he is throwing the money over there and uh, also when the groom and his friends are dancing it is uh, common for other uh, seniors and elders to come through at money on the groom as you can see one more thing the groom is wearing a red band on his hand it's called an imam zarban so that means that is it is actually to protect the groom from nazar it's a traditional thing in the sindh province it protects the groom from the nazar uh, and after that the qawal's job is to actually charge the crowd as you can see the crowd is sitting silently and calmly and then this is happening so the more he, the crowd is ecstatic the more uh, the the uh, it more opportunities for you can say the qawal in the future events so this is about it for the mehndi night and uh, this qawali continues for the whole night and the mehndi ends around 4 5 in the morning and after that Uh, then there is the event of barat the other day or a day after that so we will be discussing that uh, just right after that so this is the event of the barat this is the main event usually what happens is that the event of barat is sponsored by the bride's family but uh, in this case uh, this was not the case it was a combined event because there was no walima so they called it ashalima and uh, in, in this uh, case the both the bride and the groom's family they shared the expenses and the number of guests from both the sides came so it was around 1000 people so it was necessary that uh, the nikah salon be big enough to accommodate everything second the important factor in this uh, is you can see is uh, this uh, i would like to mention is the dress of uh, the bride the dress of the bride is actually a gift from her in-laws and similar is with the groom the groom's dress is a gift from his uh, in law so they both gift each other the dresses uh, in terms of the barat the nikah salon is giving special attention because it has to be uh, beautiful as you can see by the ambiance and uh, there is the photo shoot before and the bride and the groom reach the nikah salon around 4 or 5 in the evening this event happens at night 8 uh, 8 or 9 so they are just busy doing their photo shoot beforehand and given the attention to detail the make bride's makeup is also very important that's not cheap <laughs> so it, it that costs a lot of money and secondly the jewelry as you can observe she is wearing the traditional jewelry made out of gold and diamonds and it's supposed to be heavy for the uh, main event of uh, barat so after everyone is settled down and the photo shoot is done then begins the forehead ceremony in this the bride starts with reciting the quran uh, 
uh, he is reciting certain verses of the Quran this is supposed to bring good luck and uh, barakat uh, to this event and uh, this uh, would be followed uh, then uh, by the bride reciting uh, the Quran uh, certain verses from uh, the Quran so that uh, it brings as I already mentioned barakat to the event and their future life as you can see the ambience the backstage the stage is made very well with flowers and garlands the close relatives and the seniors are accompanying this ceremony and uh, the the sheet that the groom is wearing it's called a, a lungi it's called chadar in urdu in sindhi it's called a lungi so it's also a traditional uh, chadar which uh, the bride's family has put on uh, the groom as a s symbol of seniority and respect so in this forehead ceremony uh, the, the groom and the bride they actually touch their heads seven times and this is done by the seniors of the family as you can see one senior standing there he will make them touch uh, each other's forehead uh, and then he will give them money which the salami has mentioned before and then part off with giving prayers so as you can see the this person is handing off the money uh, to uh, to the bride sister she's sis sitting there and collecting there the bride and the groom are accompanied by their nearest family members both sisters in this case and uh, <coughs> the seniors do this seven times the elder relatives of the family they do this around seven times and after that this ceremony is over so this is supposed to bring good luck and it's a tradition uh, older tradition and uh, main aim as already mentioned is to bring good luck to the uh, couple so after the forehead ceremony begins the rice ceremony this is a very interesting ceremony in which uh, in the beginning uh, the bride she's holding uh, how do you say a hurma in her hand and the groom he has to open her hand with the one hand of his so if he's able to do that that means he will be dominant in the relationship and if he's unable to open the bride's hand with one of his hand that means the bride will be dominant in the relationship followed by this uh, holding of uh, the date or the hurma then there is the rice uh, ceremony in which uh, the rice uh, is uh, thrown seven times into the groom's hand from the girl's forehead and similarly seven times from the groom's head into the girl's uh, uh, groom's head into the bride's hand so this is supposed to bring good luck it can also be associated with hindus like they have also have seven uh, rounds uh, around the the fire so it's supposed to bring good luck and whatever the remaining rice and the, the dates are they're given distributed among the poor so this is the interesting aspect of this ceremony so after the rice ceremony then there is uh, the drinking of milk ceremony the milk is poured into a special glass it's a specially crafted glass for this actual event and uh, it shows uh, that uh, sharing is caring so first the bride drinks from the milk and then it's the groom strength to drink from the same glass and the same milk so this actually shows that they should share and they should take care of each other and uh, it's a good thing it's a blessing and what happens to the remaining of the milk is that is the interesting part that that milk is actually given to those people in their friends or relatives who are actually not married and who want to get married so this actually the, the belief is that it will help them getting married quickly it will give them good proposals earlier and then eventually it is concluded by uh, the dupatta ceremony in this uh, ceremony there is a mirror under underneath and the both the bride and the groom they look each other in the mirror uh, uh, and there is a chadar on top of it a dupatta so the, the traditional logic is that bef before the marriages were arranged and uh, the bride and the groom used to see each other for the first time at at this event on, on the mirror but it's just it has tra traditional significance uh, like uh, nothing or meaning attached to it so it just adds color to the event so that is about it that was uh, a traditional pakistani wedding i hope i had been able to sh convey and show to you everything that i know if there is anything that i did not tell unintentionally i apologize but i did my best thank you so much for your time and watching thank you once again